What's up students, today I got some more midterm review questions for you. This involves a vertical loop. So we have this vertical loop where an object is spinning around in a circle. At the top of this circle, which has a radius of 0.8 meters, a ball is traveling uh, tangent to the circle at six meters per second. And this object has a mass of 0.1 kilograms. And the question asks, what's the total energy of the system up here using the floor as X equals zero meters? They wanna know the speed of the ball at the lowest point, point P, the tension of the string at the top and the bottom of this vertical loop. And if the rope were to snap when it's at point P, how far will it travel this way as it becomes a horizontal projectile? So first let's look at part A and we see that the total energy of a system is going to be equal to the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy plus any work done by non-conservative forces. But there's no friction here, so we're good to go. We're just gonna use those two. We have mg delta y is how I solve for gravitational potential energy plus one half mv squared. So I'm gonna have 0.1 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. Delta Y now, guys, is gonna be 0.8 plus another 0.8. So we have 1.6 as the diameter, but don't forget this 0.2 as X equals zero from here. So we have an actual height of 1.8 meters plus one half, 0.16 squared. That means that the total energy at the top is gonna to be 3.6 joules. Now at part B, if energy is conserved, which it is in this case, the energy total at the bottom of the loop is gonna be equal to once again, UG plus KE. Well, we just solved for the total energy that's gonna be converted, so if it's conserved, we say that the energy total is gonna to stay 3.6 joules. I'm gonna have some MG delta Y plus one half mv squared. And this question is asking, what is the speed at the bottom of the loop? So I substitute in 3.6 equals 0.1 times 10. Now it's only at a height of 0.2 above the floor because it's at its lowest point, plus one half 0.1 v squared. So v squared is gonna be equal to 3.4 divided by 0.05, which is gonna be equal to 8.2 meters per second. C wants to know the tension at the top and the tension at the bottom of this. So we need to look at first the top. The forces acting on the ball at the top are going to be Fg, and the force of tension so there's actually two forces. Now guys, students get and ask me this question all the time. Isn't there a force due to the normal? Guys, if there is a string, there is no normal force. Normals come from loops that are surfaces. If there is no surface up here, there is no force of the normal. I cannot make that more clear to you. Students ask me all of the time, where's the normal force? There is no normal force. So we see that the FT, I mean, we see that the F net is gonna be equal to FT plus FG. Now we have a fancy word for F net of an object moving in a circle, and we call that FC. So FC is actually equal to FT plus FG. And FT is now gonna be equal to FC minus FG. We solve for FC by taking MV squared over R minus mg. I substitute in now, I get 0.1 times the speed at the top. Okay guys, the speed at the top was six meters per second. We have to square that, divided by the radius 0.8 minus 0.1 times 10. And that's 10 meters per second squared. That's what I use for little g in this course. That is gonna be equal to 3.5 newtons. Now at the bottom of the circle, we have Fg still, but now the force of tension points opposite to that. And once again, guys, there is no force of the normal. There is no surface here, okay? So please, there is no normal. So we see F net 
now equals FT. I call towards the center of the circle positive always minus FG. Fancy word for F net and an object moving in a circle is FC. This is equal to FT minus FG. So FT now is going to be equal to FC plus FG. I'm going to substitute in once again MV squared over R plus MG, which is now equal to 0.1. Now this is the speed at the bottom, okay? So we have 8.2 squared divided by 0.8 plus 0.1 times 10. And we see that the tension at the bottom is 9.5 newtons, much more at the bottom. Tension has to work a lot harder at the bottom of a loop. And for part D, so when this object now is cut right here, all of its speed is tangent to the circle. So it has a horizontal speed equal to 8.2 meters per second. And it has a height above the floor equal to 0.2 meters. Now this is in the y direction. And essentially now, this goes back to earlier in the year, all this thing is now is a horizontal projectile and they wanna know what is the x distance here. So just like in horizontal projectiles earlier in the year, I need to find time using y. And I do that by saying x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. V naught in the y direction initially was zero. So we have 0.2 equals one half of 10 meters per second squared because that is the acceleration in the y direction times t squared. We see that t to hit the ground is 0.2 seconds. Now I can go to the x direction, go through the time portal and use t in the x direction and we see that x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. The acceleration in the x direction is always negative, is always zero. So I'm just gonna have this 8.2 times 0.2, and we're gonna see that it travels in the x direction as 1.64 meters. If you like this example, guys, and it helped you a little bit with vertical loops, please, I beg you, give this video a thumbs up. It tells YouTube that I'm giving you guys good content. Share this video with a friend who's also taken the AP Physics 1. Maybe it'll help them out as well. Have a good one, guys.